Welcome to twoquestions.tv. My guest today is Drew Barton, and we're talking about websites. Welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me today is Drew Barton, the former webmaster for CNN.com and president of Southern Web, an award-winning digital agency specializing in web development and digital marketing solutions. He's also the author of this book, The Buyer's Guide to Websites, which is what we're talking about today. Hi, Drew. Welcome to the show. Hey, Susan. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, our, our special guest has awoken. <laughs> These are the things that happen. All right, Gus, try to go back to sleep. <laughs> Sorry, audience. Well, okay, so we'll continue with the interview as if this isn't happening. <laughs> In the book, you say that projects fail because of either communication or money. Could you yes. talk a little bit about communication? Because I think money is pretty obvious, but could you talk a little about how communication gets in the way? Oh, uh, sure. And this goes whether it's a project or it's an employment agreement, or it's any sort of relationship that goes on. Sure. In personal relationships, um, communication and money, that's typically the two things that are at the root of those things. So from a communication standpoint, because web development is so exciting, people tend to skip over some of the pre-planning steps yeah. in order to get to, quote, the good stuff, the fun stuff, like the design part. And as a result, a lot of communication steps are missed, the pre-planning. So I sort of liken it to when you hire a painter to come to the house the first day, they do the not fun stuff, meaning they tape off all the windows and they put down the stuff on the floor. I hate that stuff. <laughs> right, like, let's get painting, right? Yeah, right. Let's change the color of this room. Well, in, in web development and even painting, we have to communicate what needs to be done ahead of time, putting together a strong scope of work, putting together the risks that are in the project, who all the stakeholders are in the project, who's gonna sign off on things. This needs to be spoken about way ahead of time. And often we're so quick to get into the fun stuff that we skip those communication steps of, well, the last time we built a website, this happened. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm in order to make sure that that doesn't happen again, let's communicate what's involved there. Right. And so way, way too often that communication step is messed. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's a part of the entire process. I mean, communication matters all the way through. Um, sure. One thing I thought was fantastic, I, I loved the book because A, I'm a former web developer. I'm also B, a former owner of a digital agency. So C, it was awesome because those are all the things that we need to talk about. And I thought the discussion of scope creep was really fantastic. Clients asking for something that's not in the original project plan, not realizing really what that means. You know, there's a lot of, you know, oh, it shouldn't take you very long. I, I say it shouldn't take you very long, but I know how to do it. I just don't have time to do it. So it's different for me, I always say, but it's it's not because really it's not just the thing that needs to be done. It's also factoring that into all the other projects that you have going on. I mean, like, Hey, you're not my only client, but, but I thought, I thought the discussion was really interesting. So what does scope creep creep mean on the other side of it? That's a little more difficult for the, the client to see. Yeah. Um, so scope creep is the third rail in our business. It is, yeah. uh, you grab a hold of that one and it's, and it's painful. So that's why the communication step is so crucial in talking about what might happen and asking a ton of questions to the point that it almost becomes painful. Um, <laughs> but it's what helps avoid it because scope creep is the physical manifestation of miscommunication. Yeah. Unstated expectations. So, um, I know I just gave an example of a painter in the house. Another example that I have is the guy that's redoing my bathroom. <laughs> you got a lot of remodeling going on, Drew. <laughs> I have a lot of remodeling going on. Well, one day I looked in and I saw that the sink was in not the ideal place. And I said, it'd be really great if the sink wasn't that tight in the corner, if you could move it a little bit over. Not a problem, Mr. Drew. I'll move it. 
when I got the final bill for the project, yes. it was higher than what I originally stated. You moved the sink, man. I moved the sink. <laughs> My fault. And this happens in websites too. So, but the thing about it is that change order is when that person comes back to you and states, okay, this wasn't part of the original right. plan. We need to assess that with an additional charge. Yeah. It's a healthy thing so that when that happens in the process, so your project manager or your web developer or your web designer comes back to you and says, okay, this is different. This is extra. Yeah. The web developer, the agency, whoever's doing the work for you can say, okay, this is going to be X dollars more, mm -hmm. or I'm going to let this one slide. Right. But it has to be spoken about either Make way. An educated decision. You're making an educated decision and if you're giving that one if you're discounting your fee for making this change to make the client aware that you're doing this especially if it's a one-off time so that as they say in the book if you give a mouse a cookie the next time they have a change order they're not expecting it to be free right and so you've stated that expectation it's really important with the change orders the other part about it, and I talk about this in the book, is it's a sign of a healthy relationship. Right. Where you're asking for something extra, and the agency is recognizing it. The developer is recognizing it as something extra. Mm -hmm. And what happens is sometimes developers, designers, don't know their worth. Yes, they, I was they, just thinking about that. Yes, exactly. They, they don't know their worth, and they say, that's fine, we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. Or they're afraid to lose the client, or they're worried about their, you know, maybe I shouldn't charge them. Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. That's a sign of an unhealthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And if the web designer or web developer keeps doing that, they won't be a web designer or web developer much longer. They won't, it's true. Because they're doing free work. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to keep that relationship healthy, have the understanding of I'm asking you to do something extra. This is going to cost extra. I'm expecting more in my bill. That's what a healthy professional does is right. when that relationship changes that you're asking for it. Now, yeah. let's go back a step. If we go back to the original communication, the original scope of work in the project, here's why, oh, we never talked about that and it was assumed mm -hmm. and that is a cancer, right? Yeah. When you didn't talk about those things and you just assumed that it would have this e-commerce functionality, oh. you know, or you just assumed it would integrate with your social media platforms. That goes back to all the questions at the beginning. Talk about everything up front. Yeah. And so if you're finding yourself in that situation, it's because you didn't communicate early in it, and that causes these scope creep issues. So, the, so they're, they're tied together. It's, scope creep is the identification of miscommunication earlier. Mm -hmm. It also does the most amount of damage to the relationship, right? Because now you're having to go back to the well and say, I need more money. Right. I didn't communicate this to you earlier this project's larger. I did a bad job in scoping the project. So part of that communication is, you know, talking about it up front, spending so much time taping off the room, making sure the floor is covered, yeah. so the paint gets on the floor, long before anything ever gets to design, making things pretty. Because uh, that preparation work pays off X multiples at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I found when I was in web development that, and when, when I was in the agency and, and the only, I, I really just found that coaching was where my heart was and I just couldn't deal with all this is part of it. You know, it's so much to, you know, get that scope all clarified and figured out and ask all the right questions and get the contract done and make sure it's all laid out there. So it's very, very clear. And, and it was, Honestly, it, it was a lot more work than what I do, you know, doing the executive coaching, which is honestly where my heart is anyway. Mm -hmm. It just sort of 
it was one of those, like we accidentally ended up doing that. And it was, you know, but, but I, but I think when you've been in, in the web world for so long, it's very easy for your business to get scope creep. So yeah. So that's, that's a common thing, but, um, but yeah, th those things were all so important to, to having good relationship. And, and the other thing is, you know, very quickly who you're doing business with. And I always say that I like to do business with people who are nice. And that's just one of the qualities that I care about. But if they're respectful and they're nice and they, they respect you and your work, then when you go back to them and say, this isn't really within the context of what we discussed in the beginning. We did a lot of, you know, the questions, we did a lot of the analysis and this particular change or this particular expansion just isn't within the scope of the project. So this has another fee with it. And then when if you know a lot about that client is based on their reaction. And if they yeah. react angrily, you know, you've got a client that you can afford to lose. <laughs> And, and in the book, I talk about these red flags, right? Yeah. And, and those red flags are on both sides. It can be with the developer. Oh, yeah. Who's not asking enough questions right. and making assumptions. And it can also be on the client side. You know, red flag is if you've gone through two or three developers in a year. Yeah. You know, a red flag is um, when you use what I call pejorative language. Like Wait, just, can we go back to that using two developer more than two developers in a year? Yeah, can sure. we can we add a caveat to that unless <laughs> they were like, you know, Upwork developers that is that is that not that d disappeared, for example? Well, so when you're using outsourced development, whether that's Upwork or Fiverr or those other mm -hmm. things, I was actually just in a class with someone just last week and we were talking about this, like how do you express your scope of work in, in writing when there's a language barrier? I mean, right. true language barrier. If you're doing work in India or the Philippines, it's not their first language typically. Right. Philippines more so, but anyway. And this uh, the, the guy in the seminar was excellent and said, um, you would film, just like we are now, what the exercises that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So rather than assume that it's written, that they, you, you would do a video, a screen share of the actions that you're asking that person to perform. So you're oh. walking them through the websites that you like, your expectations of it so that that language barrier is done. Interesting. This is all part of that prep work, that scope of work stuff that you can explain. And so while I'd like to say, um, the Upwork stuff is, you, you got an asterisk caveat. Yeah. A lot of it's, you've got you actually got to do more work <laughs> when you're it's outsourcing true. like that because you're, you're, uh, you get the advantage of their lower rate being overseas. Yeah. So you've got to do a little bit more legwork on your side to make sure that that communication barrier, because they're physically not in front of you, mm -hmm. and you've got to do more legwork on your side. Mm -hmm. And the payoff is that they're, you know, fraction of the U.S. hourly rate, but uh, you, you as the owner have to do more mm -hmm. to inform them and do that scope of work stronger, more rich than you would if they were sitting at the desk next, next to you in the Starbucks. Yeah, I do have to say, I, I, my web developer is not a, a Upwork slash Fiverr web developer, and we've worked together for maybe six years on all my projects. And, and I love him because he knows me well enough now that when I email him and go, okay, we're going to do a project. And um, I give him the basics that I know he needs. And from there, he practically reads my mind. Like he's just, he, we, we work so beautifully together. And I think when you can find that kind of web developer, hold on to that person with both hands. And, and I think your book is such a great guide, both for web developers in terms of helping their business to be a better business, be a better web development business, be a better agency, but also on the side of the client to learn how to hire more effectively. So yeah. you do have a chance of finding that, that golden ring of the perfect, the perfect marriage between 
subject matter expert and web developer or business and web developer. It's just, it's, it's such a wonderful thing when you can relax and not be afraid of that again. In the back of the book there, are, you know, the big thing is, I don't know what questions to ask. Well, in the back of the book, there are all the questions that you ask. And so when you're meeting with the web developer, your digital marketing agency to do the work for you, take these questions in and ask them. Yeah. Because when you're asking a peer-to-peer -peer question, like what's in here, mm -hmm. um, they know that they have to give you a peer-to-peer -peer answer. Exactly. And so you're not sort of, hey, can you show me some work you've done for similar companies? Can I see what you've done? Sort of the dog and pony thing. Right. Here you're actually asking the low primary questions that they're hoping that you're going to ask about. And so at the back of the book, there's questions just to walk in and ask. And it, it lets your agency know, your designer know that you're an educated consumer. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you're a web developer, you'd be prepared to answer those questions. And if they can't, that's the red flag. Out. Right? <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs> you know? Well, Drew, I enjoyed the book very much, and I'm so glad you came on the show. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for inviting me. This was great. Would you like to come on the after show? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay, viewers, if you'd like to see the after show, come with us. Come over to twoquestions.tv. That's our website. And here is Drew's book. We're going to have a link down below in the show notes for today so you can get your copy, and then you can find your perfect web developer, too. We'll also have links to Drew's website so you can find Southern Web and him. And maybe he's your perfect web developer. You never know. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.